the majority of life on Earth on the surface is driven by sunlight energy. And obviously in a cave you don't have that. So you lack one of the big energy drivers of an ecosystem. So it becomes a very starved environment. For example, if you took a grain of sugar and broke it up into a thousand parts and took one of those parts and put it in a liter of water, that's about how much energy is available for microorganisms in these environments. When people think about a starved environment, they might think of something like the desert, where there are very few species because there's just not enough energy to support the growth or life of these microorganisms. And that's what we expected to find in caves. But what we see is that that's true when you go into a system, as you get further away from the energy input at the entrance, you see a drop off in the number of species. But there's a threshold when all of a sudden you start to see the number of species and the diversity increase. And we think what's happening in these cave systems is that they've become so starved that there is a mutualism and that everybody kind of works together. And when you have them all work together, one organism brings in the energy, which drives another organism to bring in the nutrients, which allows another organism to create the building blocks and the energy and the sugar for other organisms to grow. So you have this mutualistic interaction. And as a result, you have to have many species working together within the ecosystem to promote this life under extreme starvation. So we think that you know, you've gone past that analogy with the desert. You're way, way, many orders of magnitude more starved than that. And when you get down to that extremely low level, you actually see the diversity start to rise again. Microbes are so small that they can actually swim over time through the rock itself. When you think about, you know, crawfish in a cave in Indiana, it may be confined to that cave its entire life because it can't move. Where the microbes can, you know, worm their way through a cave and pop up in another cave somewhere else because over geologic time they've traversed that rock. The other thing that microbes do is they're light enough they can actually float in air currents. So when a cave breathes out and blows air into the environment, the microbes can you know, float around in the air and then get sucked into a cave somewhere else and then they flourish in that cave. So every environment that we look at, the microorganisms are the basis of all the ecosystems that form around them. So in caves, you know, they're responsible for mobilizing a lot of nutrients that you find in, in cave environments. When um, detritus gets washed in by floods, they're breaking it down and releasing the energy for it. So they actually form the basis for nearly all the ecosystems that you will find in a cave.